Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 6, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Kaseya and Print Nightmare are still dominating the news and should uh, be where your attention is focused on today. So I did two special podcasts uh, this weekend, but uh, do want to do a quick recap of what's kind of new about these two events. So first, let's start with Kaseya, the uh, MSP platform that apparently was breached. Well, it looks now like the entry point was actually a vulnerability in Kaseya VSA directly. So it wasn't something where someone first breached Kaseya in order to distribute the malware, but looks like they did hit Kaseya VSA directly, and that's sort of how the malware was deployed. Still, if you are running Kaseya, there appear to be a number of vulnerabilities that Kaseya was in the process of patching. They promised a patch soon. So keep the system offline until further notice or until you hear differently from Kaseya if you are running their product on premise. Detection tools have been made available by CISA and the FBI as well as by Kaseya directly and by other third parties. Uh, wherever you get your detection tool from, get it from a trusted source and of course verify the integrity of the binary before you run it. And there is now a ransom demand of $70 million that was directed at Kaseya. And if Kaseya pays the ransom, they should receive a key that will work for all affected victims. The way the R evil or Suna Kibi, as it's sometimes also called a ransomware works, there is one sort of master key that's specific to the software itself. That key has never been leaked and that key is then used to generate campaign keys. And in this case, the Kaseya campaign would use one of these campaign keys. But then there are additional keys being generated from this campaign key that are unique to each system and also unique to each file. So there is a chance that down the line, maybe our evil will allow individual victims to purchase decryption keys. And for additional details, just uh, refer to Monday's podcast. I left a number of links in the show notes. And as far as the Brent Nightmare vulnerability goes, we do now have a new CVE number from Microsoft 2021. 34527. So Microsoft is acknowledging that is a distinctly different vulnerability than the one that they patched in June. Still nothing about any kind of patch being released. So the expected date would still be a week from today at Microsoft's patch Tuesday if they're able to roll out a patch that quickly. There is now an official bulletin regarding this Windows Sprint Spooler remote code execution vulnerability, as Microsoft calls it. And the recommendation from Microsoft still remains to disable the Print Spooler or to at least disable inbound remote printing through the print spooler, which of course uh, can be accomplished via group policy. Of course, either mitigation technique will restrict network printing, which uh, may not be acceptable, but then again, you know, it saves the environment. And of course, with all the attention spent on supply chain attacks, and I just mentioned earlier to be careful that you are validating any binaries that you're downloading in response to any of these threats. It's interesting to see that apparently the RPM packages that are often used on Linux systems are a little bit sloppy when it comes uh, to verifying uh, PGP signatures. All of these RPM packages are usually digitally signed and the signatures are validated, but apparently it's not checked whether or not the keys that were used to create these signatures have been revoked. 
Well, this isn't typically a super high threat. You typically only have like a very small number of keys that you're trusting. And those keys typically come with your uh, Linux distribution. If you, however, do include packages from third parties, you may also include these third party keys, which uh, then of course uh, may not be quite as well secured as the ones that come with your Linux distribution and checking for revoke keys uh, may be a good idea. The RPM developers stated that, well, this is sort of how so RPM is supposed to work. It's not really implementing any complex trust management. Instead, if a key is no longer trusted, you just have to revoke it and remove it manually from the list of trusted keys on your system. Then we also got the July security update for Node.js. Uh, don't forget to apply it. It's nothing overly critical here. Actually, the highest uh, severity here is high, and this is a regular expression denial of service vulnerability. There are two medium vulnerabilities. One is a privilege escalation vulnerability that only affects Windows, and then there is a libuv out of bounds read that may lead to information disclosure and to denial of service conditions. So this fits in the patch it as you get around to it uh, category, uh, but uh, certainly Node.js, and that's sort of why I mentioned it here, is one of those things that you need to stay on top of and uh, keep updating as these patches are released so you're not falling behind too much. And well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.